So I've been in this 3D animation program for the past year and a half, and in one of our classes for animating in Maya, we were introduced to using animation pickers. It's basically a tool that lets you select objects in your viewports from a 2D interface. Now coming from a Blender background, that was my first time using an animation picker, and like most people, I just used to fight through clutter controls to select the right one. After that class, I got so intrigued by the tool and decided to build my own version of an animation picker with all the extra functionality I wanted in it. Thankfully, all the months of research and development paid off and I've been able to build. I'm just going to give you a brief showcase on why I made this tool and then run you through the installation and setup process for both Blender and Maya. In Blender, this is the early character rig I downloaded from Blender Studio. If you subscribe to Blender Studio, you can get access to all the rigs and project files for the projects they work on. And of course, it's a good way to support the Blender team. And over in Maya, this is a character I modeled and rigged. She doesn't have a name yet. I have a good chunk of the animation picker set up for both characters. The main element of this tool is the picker button and it has three modes. Select mode, script mode, and pose mode. When a new picker button is created, it is in select mode by default. When in this mode, you can assign objects to the picker button, which lets you select those objects by clicking on it. Next is the script mode. When the picker button is in this mode, you're able to write code in the button's code manager, which will be executed when the button is pressed. One of the most common uses for this mode is assigning a script that lets you toggle between IK and FK controls. I also coded in some helper functions that lets you control the appearance of the picker button so you can get stuff like the FK button is being hidden and inactive when IK is switched, or even the button is changing color to signify on or off state. Next is the pose mode. This is basically an internal pose library built into the tool. When the picker button is in pose mode, you're able to assign the pose of selector controls to that button so that when you click it, those objects assume that pose. There's also a built-in feature that lets you mirror a pose by holding control and clicking on that pose button. In Maya, because there isn't much of a mirror detection protocol built-in like in Blender, the mirror system wouldn't always be accurate with the opposing directions and orientation. So I added a way to specify how exactly the opposing objects should be mirrored. And this is done by using the mirror preferences. That was just an intro into the general uses of the tool. Now let's get into installation and setup. The user interface of this tool is built with something called PySide. So before you install the add-on zip folder, you first have to install PySide into the Blender version that you'll be using the tool on. To begin, close Blender if it's open. And in this case, I'll be installing the add-on into Blender 4.2. So right click on the Blender version and run as administrator. This is very important. When Blender is open, the first step is to click on editor type up here and select Python console. When the Python console is open, all you have to do is paste this code here and press enter. The code will also be in the description. It might take some time to install. Then you should see something like this. Perfect. After the installation is done, go to edit, select preferences, then click on add-ons. If you're using Blender versions about 4.2, click on this drop-down button to access install from disk. For older versions, just click on install. Then navigate to where the add-on zip folder is and select it. If everything is done correctly, after activating the add-on, you'll see a new menu at the top menu bar next to help. You can open the animation picker by clicking FT and selecting animation picker. And you're all set up. Now let's go into installation in Maya. For installation in Maya, after downloading the file, unzip it and place it somewhere safe because whenever you run the tool, it will be activated from that folder. It's similar to how Studio Library works. Open the FT Anim Picker folder, then drag and drop the install file into Maya's viewport. A new button will be added into the active shelf. Click on that button to open up the tool, and you're set. Keep in mind that if that file is moved somewhere else after installation, the tool might not open anymore. In that case, just delete it from the shelf, restart Maya, and install from the new folder location. Next, we're going to get into how to set up the animation picker for a character.
Okay, to get you started, I'm just going to set up a small part of this rig. Uh, I'm going to choose the left arm. I would use the three modes of the button so you can understand exactly what they do. So we have a blank canvas here. To edit the canvas, to add buttons, to add a background, you have to right click on the canvas and go to edit picker. You can also access this by going to edit and click in edit mode. Um, let's size the canvas so we have more space. All right, perfect. Now um, we have a black canvas. Let's say we want an image there. Um, you can open up canvas and you can click on add image. You also have the option of dragging and dropping an image in there. So I think I have an image set up for this. Just going to, yes, right here, click, drag in, and we have the image here. You have the option to scale the image. If you left click and drag on the inputs here, you can scale, increase and decrease the values. Let's put this on 0.5. You have extra functions to customize, like changing the background value. And you can turn off the dots in the background, turn on grid, turn off the axis, all of that. You can also change the grid size. All right, that's it for the canvas. Now let's add the buttons. So if you open up the button menu, you have different ways of customizing the buttons. To add a button, you right click on the canvas an empty space on the canvas and add buttons. Just add more buttons. So we're going to be setting up the arm. We have three FK controls and two IK controls. Also, we'll be setting up a button to switch between IK and FK and also a button for pose mode. You can Alt, left click, drag on a button to duplicate it like this. So we have three buttons for the arm. I'll just select this two. Alt, left click, drag. There we go. Two buttons for IK. I'm just going to select all these. I don't want them to be this long. You can change the width here. You can also scale like this. Or if you want to match the width to the height, you can click on this button here, match width to height, and you have your square buttons. And I don't want this text in here. I'm just going to delete the text. Um, let's say FK. Uh, select these two, type in IK. Good. We have extra ways of customizing the buttons. Let's select these three. I want them to be circles. Here, you can change the radius of the buttons, the edge radius. I'll just make this circles like this. Um, when this is turned on, that means it's in proportional editing mode. If you just want to select or edit the radius of individual edges, you can turn this off and you have the control to do that. But we want it to be circular, so we'll turn it on. And the next thing is you can change the opacity of your buttons like this. Perfect. Let's also change the color. Okay. If you click on this, it opens up an HSV color selector. You can dial in the color you want here, or you can just right click on it and it has preset colors for you. Uh, let's choose red for the FK controls and we can choose blue for the IK. It depends on you. It's your choice. All right. Um, you also have the option of clicking this to color pick a color from your desktop uh, like this and all that okay next up let's add the button for the pose and the button to switch between ik and fk so that'll be a script button and a pose button it's going to add a new button here and you can just name it oops arm pose perfect and we can right click go to mode and select pose mode there we go and let's also add a button for ik and fk so add one for ik add one for fk there we go ik fk and we can also add one more button that acts as a toggle between IK and FK. We'll do a bit more script in there. I'm just going to turn those buttons to black like this. And there we go. Change the color of this. I should say purple. Yeah, why not? Okay. All right. So we have the buttons set up. Uh, let's add functionality to the buttons. Just going to go out of the edit mode. And yeah, so let's add the selections first. And to add selections, you just click on the control, right click on the picker button, add selection, click here on the control, right click, add selection, click here, right click, add selection. Most of everything I'm doing is the same with Blender. And let's just switch to IK so we can see the IK controls. This is where the IK control is. This is the IK arm, right click, add selection, and the pull for the IK, right click, add selection. So we have the selections set up. Next thing is to work on making these script buttons, or there are no script buttons here yet. Select them, right click, change to script mode. Yes, now the script buttons. Okay, so let's set up the script button to switch between IK, FK, and to toggle between both. This is where your knowledge of scripting would come in handy if you know how to script. If I open script manager, 
So the command in Python would be cmds dot set a t t r and that's what we copied there, which would be comma zero dash is set to i k, which is zero. Save code. Uh, actually, I'm just copy this and paste it here. Change it to one. So if we click on this, it should be on IK and if we click on this, it should be on FK. Perfect. I'm just going to make that more visual. I'll pose the FK and click on IK and that works. And you can also write a code that toggles between both of them. So I'll just paste the code for switching to IK and we can write, um, this is to set attributes. Let's do it to get the attributes. If get attributes of this equals to zero, which is IK, uh, let's switch to FK. We'll just paste it here, set attributes to one, else set attributes to zero. Perfect. So now it switches between both of them. If you understand scripting, this function of the animation picker is going to be really helpful for you. You can also get the scripts online. You can Google them and find what scripts you want and just copy and paste them here. So if it's a Python script or so far, if I hide the controls, we have the option we can select and pose like this, and we can switch between modes. Perfect. Now let's pose the arm and add it to the pose button. So if I switch to FK and want it to be posed in FK like this, we can go here, select the buttons we posed or the objects we posed, right click and add pose. So if we reset this like this and we click on the pose, it goes back to the pose we saved. Nice. And for further like customization, you can basically frame the pose in the viewports. You can right click, go to thumbnail and click on add thumbnail. If it's not the size or the position you wanted, you can zoom in a bit, right click, and you can update the thumbnail however you want the thumbnail. So that's good. So we have the select button, the script button, and the pose button done here. Now let's see if the function to mirror pose works. So if we hold control and click, it should mirror. In this case, it mirrors properly because we have the mirror preferences set up, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there it is, it's set up. Now what this does basically, it and choose what axis um, you want to be inverted or stay the same. In this case, we wanted the translation axis to all be inverted and the rotational axis to stay the same. So that's why it works now. Depending on how your rig is set up, um, you might have to invert some axis or leave some axis the same. Okay, so we've set up this small part of the picker. If you have set up a big picker and you want to save it or share it with other people, you can go into file, then store picker, you know, then name it and basically store it. If you have picker data stored or you, someone sent you picker data that you want to basically input here, you can go to file and load picker, or you can drag the picker data directly and it should set up. In this case, I have set up the picker before. So I'm just going to drag this one, rig picker data 07, paste it here. And it's a big picker, so it's a take time. So there we have everything set up and all the controls are working perfectly. Okay, another thing, if you have referenced rigs and the rigs are like virtually the same, they have the same naming scheme in Blender or Maya. In this case, I have two rigs referenced. You can use the namespace um, to actually control both of them since they have the same naming conventions. And that is this over here. If you don't have any different um, namespaces, it's not going to show anything in the dropdown. But in this case, I have two rigs, the first one and the second one. So if if I select the first one and I can go to pose it, it works here and I can apply the same pose on the second rig. I just drop down, click this and pose or even change the pose or mirror it. Uh, same thing with the faces too. I can pose it like this. I can go uh, maybe like this, go to the other one and sorry, pose it like this. Finally, I know that there's a lot of beaches here and it can be a bit confusing. I'm still working on a manual for the picker to add all the functionality I can add. I'm working on documenting it. You can access it by clicking on info and clicking on manual. It should open your browser to my website. And this is just a work in progress right now. I'll be working to update it currently. Uh, these ones actually some outdated information, but some of it still works. I'll be creating a more in-depth series of videos very soon showing how to set up and use the animation picker. So subscribe and stay tuned for that.
And I'm currently working on updates for BJ and Hair system and now that I'm done with school, I'll finally be posting more tutorial videos on it. I know there's been a bunch of questions and some bug reports, so I'll be opening up my Discord channel for you to ask questions about the tools in there and submit bug reports. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.